So as promised, let's discuss this problem that is design a finite automata. So this time I have shifted my focus towards finite automata just to differentiate how things look different in case of FSM and FA. Both are having the same underlying architecture. The only thing differs is in terms of tuples or the number of inputs over here. So let me start this problem. The problem is like this. Design a finite automata to check the divisibility of a ternary number by 5. Now ternary numbers are nothing but 0, 1 and 2. In the previous video, we saw that uh, binary numbers are nothing but 0 and 1. So we created a finite state machine to check the divisibility of a binary number by 4. In this case, we are doing exactly the same thing for ternary numbers, but the number which to which we are dividing is 5 this time. So the theory is exactly same. Step number 2 is logic. Over here, we are discussing about finite automata. So accordingly, the theory will also change. That is also I have shown in the previous video that what exactly are you expected to write whenever you are talking about FSM and similarly whenever you are talking about FA. If you are in any doubts, you can simply go back to the previous video and check out clear so let's uh, discuss about step number two which is logic so in this case fsm was three tupled machine but fa is a five tupled machine if we talk about fsm it consisted of i o and s but we are talking about fa it consists of these five tuples okay so q stands for the number of states finite amount of states as we are dividing a number by five so there will be five states each corresponding to the five remainder values along with the initial state qs so in total there will be six states that is qs q0 q1 q2 q3 and q4 the inputs will be 0 1 and 2 because we are talking about ternary numbers initial state will be qs final state is q0 and the transitions are nothing but this is the symbol which corresponds to transition we are going to see what exactly are the transition functions in step number three so these are the five tuples using which we can represent a finite automata as compared to the three tuples ios of fsm the entire logic apart from this is exactly same clear so let's move on towards step number three now step number three is exactly similar to your previous question Instead, we are having three uh, columns over here for three inputs. We were having two in the previous case, that is 0 and 1. You can see the formula has changed a little bit. It was 2R plus 0 modern over there in the previous problem. Over here, we are having 3R plus 0 modern, where 5 is N, right? And we are having three inputs. That is why we have taken 3R instead of 2R. Otherwise, R remains same. R is nothing but the remainder value of that state. So right now, for uh, let me consider this state Q2 straight away. So if we are talking about Q2, R is nothing but 2. If I substitute this value over here in this formula for 0 input, we get 3 into 2, that is 6. 6 plus 0 is 6 only. 6 mod 5 is nothing but 1. That is what we have written over here. That is Q1. Similarly, for input 1, it becomes 6 plus 1, that is 7. 7 mod 5 is 2, which corresponds to the state Q2. And finally, for input 2, it becomes 6 plus 2, that is 8. 8 mod 5 gives remainder 3, which corresponds to Q3. With the similar logic, we can complete this table for you. So for uh, state Q3, the remainder is 3. So it becomes 3, 3 is a 9. 9 mod 5 gives 4 which corresponds to q4 and using the same logic it becomes 3 3s are 9 plus 1 10 mod 5 now we know that 10 is completely divisible by 5 so the remainder will be 0 which corresponds to q0 with the similar logic it becomes 11 mod 5 which corresponds to q1 now let's talk about q4 state where remainder is 4 so when we put the value of 4 over here it becomes 3 4s are 12 12 plus uh, 12 plus 0 that is 12 only 12 mod 5 is corresponding to q2 that is remainder 2 similarly it will be q3 over here and q4 over here i hope you got the understanding of how to construct these tables i intentionally left two rows blank to show you how to complete this table okay with this logic let's move ahead to this step number four and i hope now you have a better understanding of how to create the diagrams based on the transition tables of step number three
that is implementation table so you simply need to uh, go row by row input by input and then create this transition diagram that is let me consider this q2 state q2 on input 1 remains in q2 q2 on input 2 goes to q3 and q2 on input 0 goes to q1 that is what we have seen in the table over here let me go back to the table that is q2 on input 1 goes to q2 only q2 on input 0 uh, goes to q1 and q2 on input 2 goes to q3 so with the same logic we have to construct the entire diagram and don't forget to put a double circle over here in q0 which represents a final state that's it so let's move on to step number five step number five is nothing but simulation i have taken only a single example just for time constraints uh, so this is a number 21011 which if i am dividing by five ultimately step by step we will uh, reach this particular state q3 over here after reading all the inputs so it simply means the final condition the final step which we have reached is state q3 and all the inputs have been read and hence we can say that this particular string is not divisible by 5 if on the other hand we would have a state q0 over here with epsilon inputs then we would have accepted this particular state but that is a different case over here because we are not having such an input we are having an input which is not divisible by 5 and hence we have got an answer q3 in the final step so this is how we solve a problem uh, that is design a finite automata which is basically used to check the divisibility of a ternary number by 5. So this problem was intentionally taken to just show the difference between how you have to proceed your problem if it is asked about FA or FSM. So in the next video we are going to see a problem which is something like this. Design a FSM in which the input is valid if it ends in 110 over certain input 0 comma 1 so from the next lecture onwards next video onwards we are going to focus our attention on problems involving strings so stay tuned for the next video thank you